Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with another introduction to one of my stencil designs. Now, before we get started, um, long sleeves, if my hands look like they're shaking, it's not too much caffeine. I want to say this, and it's either minus four or minus six here today in Wales. Um, I know from my friends in cooler climates, that's probably nothing to you, but we're not used to that kind of weather, and with the energy bills that they are, it's a bit bitter, let's put it that way. Anyway, moving directly on, I wanted to introduce you to um, one of my stencil designs called Hopeless Harlequin. This is Hopeless Harlequin, comes in three different sizes, and I hope to use all three different sizes in this video. Um, the sizes are 9 by 12, 8 by 10, and 5 by 7. I tend to use the larger one I'm using my 12 by 12, the middle one, which is 8 by 10 kind of works for both the big stuff and the smaller stuff. And I tend to use a smaller one if I'm doing a planner page, or I'll use elements like these elements here on a postcard or an ATC. So I use it quite a lot. And diamonds are one of my go-to shapes. I really like using diamonds. So when I designed this one, it was a no-brainer. But I did want to have the option, and if you look at it this way, if you look at that, that's approximately an A5. Um, an A5, I mean a 5 by 7 although the diamonds are bigger, and then you've got the half with it breaking to pieces. So we've got some stuff to play with. I do have one other stencil, which is an oldie but goodie that I'm going to use in this, and this is my um, dots or bubbles one, which you've seen me use like a hundred times before. And yes, I've taken on board your comments, and I will recreate this stencil and I will put it into the PM Artist Studio design folder um, for them to manufacture. So many of you requested it. I know there's lots of them out there, but you know what? You have the choice then. And I will go ahead, because as you've seen, I use it a lot. And it'd be good if I started using a new one, because this one is pretty darn tied. Okay. So what am I thinking? I'm going to do a 12 by 12. So I've got my 12 by 12 gel plate. I've got my 5 by 7 gel plate. I use this as my palette. I use this as my canvas. I intend making a 12 by 12 background. And I've just got some 12 by 12 cardstock here for that. And I've cut some strips, which I know that I think, let's see if I can split them up. That's three and a half inches. That's two and a half inches, and this is around, well, oh, actually, that's three and a half inches as well. So I know that I can actually turn these into um, artist trading cards if I choose to use them to clean up bits on the plate, which I will. Other than that, I've just got my large brayer and my small brayer. As you know, I use my small brayer 99.999% of the time, probably because I forget I've got the big one. And I've also got, over here, I've got a brayer off sheet, which is going to be off screen. And the last and most importantly for me is I've got my Baron here, uh, my birthday present to me, and I love using this and this will help me do the project. So what am I going to do today? Because it, it's called Hopeless Harlequin, that's the name of the stencil, and all links to it will be in the box below. It will take you through to PM Artist Studio, who are the only manufacturers and suppliers of it. So you need to order through them if you'd like to purchase one, which I'd be very grateful for. Thank you very much. Um, I instantly think Carnival, I think of Venice, the masks. I, I Basically, for me, it's all rich, opulent colours. So I'm going to start with some reds and some purples. So I'm going to come in. Let's see what I've got. I've got Purple Plum by Arteza. And I've got, that's a transparent. I don't want a transparent at this point. What's this? Is this? And this is Raspberry Red, both by Arteza. Now, I'm probably going to forget as I go along to tell you what the different makes and names of the paints are. Please forgive me for that. When I get creating, I sometimes get lost in the making, which a lot of us do. Now, I normally put my stuff on the plate and put it on here, but as it's the background, I think I can probably guesstimate how much I'm going to use. Now, I want purple and red because I want... I want a certain opulence about this. I'm actually considering, yes I am, I'm going to take some pearl pink here. Um, this is Artiste acrylic paint. I think it's called Rose, isn't it? I can't see the name on it. I'm terrible at finding names on things. And I just want to put a little bit of this in the mix as well, just to add almost streaks, um, 
just glints of highlights. Now, I haven't put a lot on there, but knowing me, I'll probably put too much. Hopefully I don't get this all over my sleeves. This is a brand new sweatshirt. I bought it yesterday. I'd rather not get it filthy. But you know what? Eventually it's going to be filthy anyway, because I'm always in my art cave. I'm always creating stuff and I'm always getting stuff all over me. And mm, I've got it on the curtains and there's a bit on the wall and the bookcase by the side of me has got some very artistic splatters on it as well. So, you know, there's no winning, but you know, I don't mind. It's all part of the process. And it's not like I'm a Vogue model and I'm not going to be glamorous and be wearing wonderful clothing all the time. So as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm cool and as long as the clothes I'm wearing are practical, that's all that matters to me. So first thing I'm doing is I'm literally just putting down a background. Now, my plan is to do reds and purples and then probably go to metallics. So I quite like gold in here as well. Um, maybe a touch of black if I feel it needs drama. I'm more likely to reach for maybe a pale pink or an ivory than a white. So we're just gonna see how this develops. I've got something in mind. But as anything, I will let my art tell me the direction it wants to go in. So let's just lift this off here. Okay, so that's giving me a good start. That's a little bit of something I didn't need there. Now I do have a bit of a white edge on here. I will deal with that. I'm not sure I might be able to pick up that white edge there. Now, my paper is definitely a 12 by 12. And my plate is definitely a 12 by 12. But if you own one of these plates, you will find over time, they tended to stalk slightly. And if I lay it down and double check, what happens? It all gets a little bit out of shape on the edges. Do I care? Heck no, I don't. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got grunge on there. I want to go in and I want to use the 9 by 12. Now for this one, I want to come in and I want to lay down some normal diamonds not the broken down diamonds. Um, I want to make sure it's relatively straight on the, on the plate. Not that that's a huge concern, but it's something I want to be wary of. I then want to pull in something that's um, a darker colour than the background. Uh, I'm thinking, I used purple plum. Let's see if I've got, there you go, wine red. I've got Arteza wine red. Now this time I am going to Put it onto my smaller plate first. Little crumbs off it. I don't want a huge amount. I'm going to leave that to one side because I've got a feeling I may need a second bout of that later on. Now I'm just loading up my brayer and I'm going to bray it in sections on the plate. I don't want to bray the whole thing. I don't need the whole thing done. I just want to brayer sections. I'm going to lift it up and pull it across to another area because what I want to do is I want to put patches of this on there without dominating the whole thing. This will be a background layer in that it'll be in there. It will be seen, but it's not going to be a massive, a massive amount of color. Just come in and add that across there. Now, um, I am part of the design team as in team of designers, not necessarily as you may think, um, people who make samples for the design team, which I know is a terminology we sometimes use when we're doing television shows, we always say, thank you to the design team for creating samples. Well, this isn't one of those. Right, I'm going to use this piece of card just to pick up any spare on here. Why waste it? Pick up on the edges. I'm not planning to create or finish the ATCs in this video. These are literally, they're going to, when they've had enough layers on, they will become part of my background collection so that I know that I've got stuff there for future videos or future makes. So I've got stuff on here. Now the downside of only using sections is I don't always get nice clean edges. So I'm gonna take a damp cloth and this is this could be a baby wipe. I tend not to use baby wipes and I'm just gonna almost flick off some of the areas where like along here I've got little tiny tips of the diamonds I'm just going to pull them out and on some of the areas I might just dab down just to break them up slightly 
um, again on here with this one I don't want things looking so uniform right there you go that's put that on there now this has been drying as I've been talking although I must admit it's probably not going to dry very much because it's so darn cold here today however if you're in a hotter climate you may consider putting a retarder into your paints um, it's, I don't know whether retarder is, is the right word. Retarding is what it does, but it sort of basically lengthens the drying time of acrylic paints and other mediums. So you can buy, I think Liquitex does one, I think other companies do as well. So there you go, see that's what I was aiming for. Now what I've done, I put this on this way, I'm going to turn it round the other way. Which way was it? So I need to get my orientation. I'm going to turn it around and put it back on the plate and see if I can't take a little bit of a ghost print of the areas that didn't fully pick up or the paint was too thick on the area. It's what most people call a ghost print. There you go. No, it, it had dried, but I'm loving that anyway. I'm quite happy where that's, that's at. Let's just leave that down there for a second. And let's see if I can pull anything up on these spare strips of card, which I very much doubt I'm going to, but no, there's nothing, it's already dried. I don't mind, it can stay there. So, um, let's see, I've got that colour, that colour. I'd like to put some lighter colour into this. And I do mean slightly lighter colour. And I think I'm going to pull that in with maybe, I was going to pull in cream again, uh, cream. I wonder whether cream is the right colour. Let me have a little look. No, let's go with, okay, I've got this really pale pink. What's this one called? This one's just called pink or rose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on here and then put some brayed patches of it onto this surface and then lift it up. I don't want a huge amount, just want a bit. I just want to catch areas and I don't want to do this directly onto my print because goodness knows I could make the print really white and that's not my intention. So I'm just coming in, I'm doing random patches and as you can see, as I'm brayering it, it's lifting more paint off. I've got paint on here, which is just gonna go onto my brayer or sheet. I'm planning to make a brayer sheet journal at some point or notebook. Oh, there's a hair in the middle of there. Can't be one of mine because I'm bald. Well, I've got a shaved head anyway. Right, take that out of there. there go, I think I've got it. So I'm just going to use that ATC I started. I don't mind. I'm waiting for that to dry slightly so I can take a little bit more off it. So this is a great way to use up spare paint, is to use it onto other projects. I very often do postcards, ATC tags, just by building up stuff like this, because once this is done, and I've added other elements to it, once it's cut up, you've just got interesting backgrounds to work from. Okay, so I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna pull areas of this off now. I don't want to white out my background. So I'm going to come in now, I'm going to lift patches with, this is just a damp cloth. I don't tend to use baby wipes, I tend to use a damp face cloth. I usually go through about two in a year, um, because they get so stained by the end of it. I don't mind that, um, they're just a bit of equipment to me, and that's what I use them for. I'm going to come in, pop this down, now it was a damp cloth, not a wet cloth. If it's a wet cloth, you might end up getting your, your piece of card a bit too wet, and that's not my intention. So, PM Artist Studio are a family company based in Texas. Um, this is who they are. The P is Patricia, the M is Mariah. There's a couple of hidden elements there as well. There's Brad, which is Mariah's husband, and their little daughter, who's very artistic, called Izzy. And hello, Izzy, if you watch this. So, PM Artist Studio... They, they have a presence on Etsy. They also have um, their own website, which is where I'll link to where my products are sold. Um, 
it's all about mixed media it's all about creativity they do lives three times a week that's the times of the lives they usually last about two hours central means it's central american time if you're looking for them i try to be at every one of the lives but sometimes life gets in the way however i do my best um so if you need to ask me a question or follow up on something by all means, give me a holler on there. I'm more than happy to answer it there. And P&M, Patricia and Maya are both very happy for their designers to answer questions. Okay, loving where this is going. I've got a bit of an old wall type effect here, and I'm going to enhance that in a little while. But what I want to do is I want to come in, I want to put um, some of the circles in that I said I want to use, but I don't want a lot of them. I just want a few on here. And I'm just going to do the center of here and then I'm going to pick them up in patches. Now, liking where this is going, I like the darkness of it. And for once, yes, I am saying I like the darkness. And I think I want to put something rich into it. So I've got this color called Wild Violet by Doe Crafts Artiste. I've got a feeling that might be a British company. I'm not sure. Um, although it's a big name, so maybe they've been all over the world. So I'm just going to put some of that colour on here and then I'll probably, from this I'll probably go into putting some lighter colours on here and then we'll start working with things like um, metallics, which is, I really think that when I think Harlequins and Jesters and um, the Venice mask celebrations, it's like, it's all opulent, it's all red and golds and shiny and it's I love it I've never been been to the Venice um celebrations however there that's one of the things maybe one day I need to do so see I'm just pulling off pieces from here lift a little bit up in the middle see I want this faded type of look on it I think that's potentially enough that'll do right let's just Grab in this sheet and make the most of what's on this plate. And as I've still got a patch there, let's just pick it up on here. There you go, little bits. You'd be amazed how quickly things build up. So there you go. See, we've got now, to be honest with you, if I went in and cut this into sections, that would give me a good background for something. I am going to bring in another piece of that card oh, come on. to pick up what's on this plate because as the saying goes, waste not, want not. Not really sure where that originated from, but I know it's a saying that I heard a lot in my youth. So there, that's given me more on the back of there. So right, I do need to do a little bit of a clean up now. I need to have a clean plate, I think, for the next bit. So I'm just going to bring in that damp cloth and wipe it off. If I wasn't doing this project, I'd probably pick those dots up with another piece of 12 by 12, but I, I don't want to keep people too long when it's just introducing a new design to you. If it's a project or a tutorial, then yes, I normally aim for an hour. But when it's something like this, I just want to give you a quick introduction and show you what I've designed and, and hopefully encourage you to add it to your um, stencils or masks of your own and if you are going to create anything using any of my pieces please if you're on social media tag me in or share it to me just going to love to see what others come up with i tend to create these things with stuff in mind however that doesn't always mean that what i do with them is the only thing that can be done with them i think that's really important to note it's not okay we're at this point at the moment, I now want to add in something. Now I've got the next size down of the stencil to use as well, which is fine. I think I want to add, I keep airing towards white and I think white is probably wrong. But it's sort of a rich creamy color would work actually. I'm thinking of gold later on. Right, that's mustard yellow. Let's put some mustard yellow in there. As with everything, guys, if it doesn't go right, then we just change it. Now, 
I'm going to be using this piece of corrugated cardboard. You've seen me use it before. This was just a piece of packaging and I took off the top piece. I do know in some craft shops you can find a plastic um, or a man-made version of this that's not cardboard. Um, very useful. I use it all of the time. Let's take that off there. I know that my friend Gail Agostinelli was the one I first saw this cardboard idea from and Gail actually uses it um, to print lines onto blank blank papers for her journals. So very useful. I tend to use it for my mixed media as you're seeing me do now. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to pick up pieces of this and certain areas. I'm just going to add a little, actually that was a good, good colour choice. I didn't want to put gold on at this point. However, I think gold gold will be the feature metallic on here later. Just a little bit there. I tend to always forget about the middle. So let's put a little bit of in, in the middle there. Right, I've got stuff on the plate there. That can easily be added to something like this strip. See, we're just building up interest. I've left the lines on there because they're interesting on there. That's cool. Let's take this last piece here, the piece we've already been covering, just to tidy up there. There you go. Let's leave those to dry off now because I don't really want to be adding more to them. Oh, looking across there. Here's one from a previous video. Let's add a bit more to that one. There we go. I've always got things like this hanging around ready to be used. So I think the excess can go on here. Now, um, all the PM Artist Studio stencils are made from 74 pound UPO, which is, oh, we're gonna get this wrong, 100% um, polypropylene, I think it is. I always get the poly things named wrong, so it is written on the packaging. Where is the packaging gone? Um, there you go, oh, I was right. 74 pound use for 100% polypropylene synthetic material. Um, so it isn't clear. I'm quite happy it isn't clear because the clear stencils are the ones I lose. Right, looking at this now, um, I'm not far from finishing this to be honest, looking at this. I would like to use the medium. And I th actually, I think I'm gonna go back to that pearl pink. Now, anyone who knows me knows pink is not my favourite colour. Um, I don't know why it's not my favourite colour. I'm just, just not a pink person. But I'm going to use this pearl pearl blush. Oh, it's called pearl blush. That's me looking for a name. It's written directly on it. And I'm going to do a very similar thing that I did before. Now, this is going to be fairly transparent when I put it down. So I'm just going to put this on the plate. And I'm going to bray some of this colour through the stencil. And then I'm going to pick it up again using the 12 by 12. Now I'm not worried about covering these bits. I don't really intend using them. It's gone a bit peachy in colour. However, um, I've got those artist trading cards on the go so I can use that. So I'm just going to come in now. I want to keep it in this orientation because the diamonds are in that orientation. So I'm just going to pick up patches of it. I'm kind of not really looking where I'm picking up. I'd like that to have a little bit more on it. And maybe a little bit more in that corner there. Right, there you go. So we built that up. Let's put this to one side, just so I can pull in some of the other stuff. I was gonna let this dry. I think I'm gonna use that directly on there. That would give me something nice and interesting. Again, bit on there. And I'm going to use this long one just to pull up the strips. Now, I'm not going to be showing you the final ATCs, as I said. But if I remember at the end of this video, I will show you where we've got to with making these back. That's interesting. I like that. Right. So time to clean this plate off a bit. So now I'm using um, a 12 by 12 and I'm using acrylic paints and all of that to create these backgrounds. 
you could be using these very same stencils with inks, with sprays, with texture mediums. You could use them with pastes. You can use them in your journals, your planners. I would say you probably don't need um, the large one, which is a 9x12 for a planner. So I would say buy the 5x7. Very often when I'm working in my planners and my journals, I just need a little bit of background interest on a blank page or coffee dyed page. And if I was using this, that's almost page size. That's perfect size for it. Right, let's take a little bit of a look and see where I'm actually up to. Okay, we're up to here. Now, I'm liking this so far. It's looking relatively busy, so let's get my sleeves out of the way. Um, however, I like it. I've got the two different size diamonds on there now, and I've only got the small ones to go. The small ones are probably going to be done in, um, in either a gold or a contrasting colour, which could even be white or it could be black. I don't think it's going to... Oh, I've used this before. Oh, that was me playing when I first got this. I couldn't wait to share it with you guys, but I had to have a play first. Why wouldn't I have a play first? Right. I wonder. I'd quite like... So I'm having a thought for a moment, guys. I just want to do a bit of a check. Now, I'm going to be putting gold on there, or I'm going to be putting bronze or copper. I need something metallic. Um, so having to think. I don't think... Or do I think? Hmm... I'm unsure. My gut is saying I need to add some white to certain areas. Um, however, my instincts are if I put white on, I don't know. Um, I always add white and now I've added the pink on, which was the good, good and correct thing to do. I just think maybe it needs, it needs one more colour before I go to the gold. Now, I did have purples, but I think that's going to look too washed out. I have got... Hmm, that might do. Dioxine purple. I wonder. Let's take a bit of a risk, guys. Okay, I'm going to do a technique which I normally do um, called a kissing technique, where ooh, the whole lid came off. That's not a good idea. Just the top, Griffiths. Just the top. Now, it is a high flow paint, so it's also, as you can see by the bars here, it's transparent or at least semi transparent, and that's good. I want to pick up bits of it, and I think I'd like to pick up stuff that's potentially around the edges just to try and get almost like a vignette feeling. I'm not overly worried that it's a perfect coating on, on the plate, that's not. Not a worry to me at all, but I'm going to come in and just touch down corners of it. See, just to add little bits like that. There are certain areas that I really think could benefit with a bit of something. I think over there as well. Right, that's just enough. Knowing when to stop is one of the hardest things for me. I'm going to put that up there while I deal with some of that. I think some of that might look really nice on this one. And I'm literally just dropping it down onto it and picking up. And this is the smaller piece that had the dots on it, so let's pick some of that up on there. And yeah, you guessed it. I've got another piece ready to go as well, so this is a plain one. Let's just clean the plate up totally because paint's not the cheapest thing in the world, guys. And and funding videos and your own art can be a little expensive sometimes. But it's something I love. There you go. That's, oh, that's a lovely colour. It's something I love to do, so it's a privilege to be able to share it with you guys. Bit of a clean up here. Now I think I'm going to potentially come in with the metallics. I think I want to take one last look at this though 
before I decide on the metallics I'm going to use. So I am absolutely loving that at the moment. Now one of the problems I'm going to have if I use gold is I've got like three or four different golds. However, none of them are really um, that solid of a colour, which is why I'm a bit hesitant and think I'd quite like to put copper onto there and then put gold on top. And I think I'm going to do that. So let's just put that to one side. Let's bring in. Actually, no. Let's go all the way back to the original version, which was the larger one. And I'm going to pull in some copper. Where's my copper gone? I've lost the copper. Oh, there it is. The biggest tube in the box and I can't see it. How scary is that? Right, I'm just going to squeeze some of that onto my plate. I don't need a lot. I just need a bit. And I'm going to brayer it out. It's a lovely creamy copper, this Amsterdam. And I'm just going to bring this in. Just into the areas where I want to pick it up. I'm not going over the sides of the stencil and that was one of the things when I designed this. I wanted to give you all an area around the stencil where you could brayer or paint and not go over the edges. So I do go over the edges occasionally, but that's just me being lazy. So, right. Again, I'm going to look for areas, excuse my shoulder, where like here needs it. So I'm going to come in, pick up a patch of it. This area here looks like it needs it, so I'm going to bend my card in half and just pick up a piece with a rocking action. I think I like the piece over there needs it as well. I think I just like a little bit down there. And a little bit up there as well. Let's put that down a second. Well, this is still active. Let's just come in and pick up pieces of this onto these. So I wonder what the weather's like with you guys. If, I mean, we we were doing fine. Um, let's see, what is the date today? I will say this is the 13th of December. On the 9th of September, we were fine. We had a few chilly days. Um, and then I was away on the 10th. And then the night of the 10th, the temperatures dropped. Britain was hit by snow and everything had, that's actually looking fabulous, had such a heavy downfall of ice that the country looked like it was a, it was a Christmas postcard. But it wasn't even snow. It was, it was this thick, thick, solid ice. Like I left, I had a two hour drive to get home. And as I left, I was in Bracknell at the time, which is on the outskirts of London. So I left with a heavy frost. I drove through freezing fog. I then drove through even more heavy frost. I drove through a snowstorm and then I hit the Seven Bridge to get into Wales. And Wales hadn't had any snow or ice. And suddenly all the hills were green again. And that was just within a two hour journey. I was like, what the heck is going on? Right, let's pull this in to take a look at this now. Okay, I'm loving the metallic of that. I'm loving where it's all at. I do want to put gold on this because we know I want to put gold onto this. I don't want this to be too busy on the eye. And I'm thinking about doing a really thin layer of the original colour, which was one of the original colours, which was this. And just kissing this down on the plate just to pick up slight areas which will push things into the background and then coming in and doing the last bit of colour. And I'm beginning to doubt myself now and I'm beginning to think that I don't want to do gold, I want to do black. Purely because I know that my gold is a transparent or semi-transparent. The gold I like is Arteza gold and I've run out of it. I know I've run out of it. Um, and all of my other golds are semi-transparent or transparent 
and they just it's just not what I want. I wanted a solid pop of gold. So let me just come in here, just gonna pick up areas of this just to just because it needs to. Right, that's better. It's funny because a lot of people ask me, how do I know what to put on? Where do I know, need to know where I put it? Actually, I don't know. It's, it's purely instinct. And I think the instinct comes from doing it. Um, I'm a great believer in to get better at art, you have to do art. It's, it's one of those things. Don't be scared of making a mistake. Goodness knows, I have made some atrocious pieces of painted background in my life. I mean, seriously, you, you wouldn't have seen them because I can assure you I wouldn't have let them out of the craft cave. However, it's only by making a mistake can you advance because every mistake is a learning curve. And it's not even a mistake. It's you've taken something in the wrong direction. So what? It's, it's, it's paper, it's paint and it's time. And that's the important thing to remember. Right. I think the next bit I'm not going to do on the brayer. So let's take the plates out of the way. Or at least that one. So uh, I've got this here. I do want this in and I really do think this needs black. I really do think this needs black. The only other thing I could potentially add to this would be some maybe curls and swirls which I would have added with a white and I'm very tempted to reach for a Tim Holtz flourish stencil that I own but I'm going to try and break away from that. I want I want this to be this. So I'm just going to reach for some black. Where's Mars Black gone? Let's paint grey. Mars Black. Now, have I got a sponge anywhere? Yes, I've got one tiny little bit of sponge left in the bottom. But how small is that? Okay, well, it'll do. It'll be fine. So I'm going to sponge this on because I can be a little more select as to where I put it without just the randomness of adding it on with that dropping technique. Can I get back on that? Why can't I put paint lids on lately? There you go, it's on now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the stencil down in areas where I can see this places like that that need that need something. I'm also lining the top edge up with the top edge of my 12 by 12 because this is what I would call a focus or final feature. Um, I want it to be horizontal or I want it to be vertical. I do not want it to be um, at a jaunty angle because it's the final stage. I, I don't want that look on this piece. I want the whole diamond thing to work. Now I'm tapping it down with a sponge and I'm building up the colour or the black. Black isn't a colour. Black is... I think black is all colours and white is no colours or I do I get that wrong but you, you know what I mean I'm tapping this down see just to be able to put patches into here choosing areas that I'd quite like to put it into now I'm possibly going to do three areas and then I'm probably going to go in and put little bits on on the borders of things or on the edges of things just because that's the look I like I don't mind picking up some of these diamonds that are now falling away, these ones in the bottom of the design, because that's what they're there for. This corner, I think, could benefit from some of this. I don't mind taking it all the way to the corner. It does feel like it needs more to me. I'm going to try and do this in a kind of a diamond shape. So you can see I'm following these here. I mean, it's never going to be a perfect diamond because I'm using a sponge. And I wouldn't want it to be a perfect diamond anyway. But it sort of pulls the design together. I think a little row of them up there would do as well. It's just the way I build up. It's just the way this goes. And I think I want to just add 
I was going to put these falling diamonds into that corner, but I think I want to put them into here as if they're being introduced and they're the trouble with something on an angle is it usually leads your eye somewhere. So if I was put it, sorry, if I'm in shot for this, I hope so. If I was to put them here, it would lead you out of the image. But by putting them up here, it's doing the reverse. It's leading you into the image. There you go. Let's put that to one side because I've got a feeling I'm going to get myself very, very messy if I don't focus on that. I'm thinking that might be done, guys. I am tempted to reach for white. But I think that might be the wrong decision. Just have a bit of a clean up just so I can... If I leave, if I leave the paint on this surface too long, it just stains it and I, I have devil's own job getting it out. So... I keep thinking I need white and I keep thinking how would I add white if I was going to add white. You know, I've got an idea. I'm just getting a store card, one of these things, and I'm just going to bring in... Where's the white? Sorry, this white is almost out. I use a bulldog clip to hold them close so I don't have to keep on um, rolling it up all the time. It's not like toothpaste where the tube rolls up with these new paint tubes they've got. It just doesn't. Now I'm just going to bray that out slightly. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to tap this down and just add little patches. Not sure it's the right thing to do. I just feel it needed something on it. And as it's my piece of art, guess what? I can do it. I think that's it. I don't do any more to that now because I think if I do, I'm just going to ruin it. I love that. Right, let's put this by. Let's get this paint. So I'm just add some of that to this brayer off sheet. Pretty much is turning it back into what it was before, which was a white page. Have I got any of those spare pieces? Right, this could probably do with a little something. It's not picking up a lot. I don't mind that. There you go. I need to clean off. So that was my hopeless Harlequin. Um, just a little bit of a side story. Um, why is it called hopeless Harlequin? It's called hopeless Harlequin because basically I was trying to tell a story with the stencil. So if we look at this, this was the Harlequin. He was having a very bad day and he was falling apart. So he was just hopeless, so hopeless he fell to pieces. Yeah, it's a quirky little thing, but my brain tends to do that sort of stuff. So once again, um, this Hopeless Harlequin comes in three different sizes. We have a 9 by 12, we have a 5 by 7 and an 8 by 10. Obviously, I got those in the wrong order, but you know where I'm coming from. Um, I will actually put the link to Hopeless Harlequin in the description box. So if you look down there, there's either going to be a gravy or where the description is, it'll say read more, click on that, it's in there. Um, they're manufactured and shipped from Texas, USA, from PM Artist Studio. Do pop over to them. They're a great group of people and they do some fabulous stuff. Very creative, very knowledgeable in their shares. Please go over and say hi and tell them I sent you. That would be fabulous. And enjoy, guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed Hopeless Har Harlequin. I love it to death. Okay, so I'm just popping in. I've just finished filming the video, which... This was the end result. And guess what? I remember I hadn't shown you what I did with the backgrounds for the ATCs. So this was the one we started last. That one needs a bit more on it. This was one we started near the end. That one will need a little bit more on it. 
This one I think will actually be almost ready to go. I'll cut that into ATC or artist trading card sizes and then think about putting a feature thing on here somewhere like an element, a flower or maybe a jester's face, something like that. This one I'm really, really loving. I'm thinking, yes, I might make those into ATCs, but actually those might make a couple of nice journal cards for my journal. And this one I'm really, really loving. So not sure how I'm going to use that, but it's meant to be cut into ATC sizes. It's not quite big enough for um, a postcard, but certainly make journal cards. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing those being made. As I said, they're just things that I make on the edges of other stuff so let me put that back in place there and it just leads me to say goodbye so i'm carrie the crafter that's c-e-r-i the crafter until next time bye bye now